Hey fellow gardeners, Dawn here from Seasonal Designs. I have received so many questions about our prairie, I thought it was time to do a video. So today I am going to walk you through the five steps to successfully establish a prairie. Prairie meadows are becoming an increasingly popular alternative to traditional landscapes. Our native flowers and grasses are both stunning as individual plants as well as a complete prairie plant community. Perhaps best of all, the prairie helps us really to reconnect with the earth and creates a haven for plants, animals, and insects. The prairie grasses and flowers can create a beautiful habitat for birds, butterflies, and other beneficial wildlife. These deep-rooted prairie plants encourage infiltration of rainwater into the soil, helping to reduce runoff and flooding. Because native prairie flowers and grasses are almost always exclusively perennials, they're going to return to bloom year after year. Now, installation of a prairie or meadow is not quite as simple as working up the soil a little bit and sprinkling seed in the ground. You can do that, but you're probably not gonna get the results that you would like. I feel that there are five steps that really should be followed and considered to ensure that you have success with installing a prairie or meadow. Number one is site selection. You want a sunny, well-ventilated location with low weed densities. Prairie plants require at least a half day of strong sun, but full sun is best. You also want good air circulation so you don't have to deal with fungal diseases. Good candidates for seeding to prairie include areas presently in grass, cornfields, soybean fields, or alfalfa fields. And the reason for that is that they are typically farmed season after season and weeds do not get a chance to establish themselves. This is just a corner of our field, which was a farm field for many, many years, which made it a really good candidate for seeding to prairie. Number two is site preparation. Kill all the weeds before planting. Do not overlook this step. There are many different methods of killing the weeds and preparing your site. You can smother it with black or clear plastic. You can smother it with layers of newspapers covered with grass clippings. You can smother it with cardboard. You can repeatedly till your soil every three weeks. All of these things I just mentioned must be done for a full growing season. If you have sod, you can remove the sod with a sod cutter. And last but not least, you can use an herbicide treatment to kill all of your weeds. Number three is plant selection. Match the plants to the soil and growing conditions that you have. As you know, every plant is adapted to a certain set of growing conditions. Some like well-drained, some like moist, some like sandy, others prefer clay. There are species that can grow in almost any soil. A prairie is very different from a garden. The plants in your prairie are essentially going to be on their own. And they also need to be strong enough to fight it out with the weeds that will try to establish themselves, especially in the first few years. Therefore, it is essential to select plants that are adapted to your specific site conditions. I highly recommend using prairie seed mixes that are matched to your soil and growing conditions. I also highly recommend that you purchase them from a reputable source. I personally use prairiemoonnursery.com or prairienursery.com when I order my seeds, bare root plants, plugs, or three inch pots. I also find them very helpful and very knowledgeable as prairies are their specialties. Many seeds have this sort of built-in dormancy protection that keeps them from germinating at the wrong time. Like before a killing frost or when it's in the middle of a drought, for example. Seeds in the wild, they lay dormant in the soil until the conditions are right for them and then they germinate. If you're buying your seeds from a reputable seed supplier, 
they should be providing you with a whole bunch of information on their website. The soil conditions that that plant does well in, the growing conditions that it needs, but they should also be providing you with information about germination. Does that seed need any pretreatment in order to germinate? So I'm gonna show you an example. This is from Prairie Moon Nursery. This is one of the websites that I told you to take a look at. And they send this with all of their seed packets. And on the back of this brochure are all of their germination codes and then what that germination code means. What does that seed need to have done to it before it will germinate? On the inside of this brochure, it's going to give you additional information on planting, as well as artificial ways for you to treat that seed so it will germinate for you. Some seeds don't need any pretreatment. You get them as long as it's warm out, you can go ahead and broadcast those seeds. Other seeds do need a pretreatment, but some of that pretreatment can be done by Mother Nature. For example, some seeds need what's called a cold moist stratification. So I can do that by taking those seeds and broadcasting them in fall, because in winter they're gonna get their cold period. And then when that snow melts in spring and we get rain, they get that moist period. The other thing I wanna mention is seed quality. You, you know, there isn't an agency that's out there to kind of watch over seed quality for prairie seeds as far as I know. So again, you're really going to want to work with a reputable seed supplier because the success of your prairie is going to be directly related to the viability of the seed that you put down. So do not accept, don't buy cheap seed. It's Number four is planting time and method. Prairie seeds can be successfully planted during two times. The first is spring thaw through June 30th, and the second is September 1st through the soil freezing up. Obviously planting in July and August, not recommended due to drought. Now, if you plant in spring, that tends to favor the warm season prairie grasses. And if you seed in fall, that typically results in a higher germination of the prairie flowers and a lower germination of the warm season prairie grasses. Fall plantings are often referred to as dormant seedings because when you throw those seeds out, they are not gonna come up in fall when you plant them. They're gonna overwinter in the soil and germinate the following spring. As far as planting methods go, depending on the size of your site, you could hand broadcast, you could use a small hand seeder or a small push seeder, for larger areas, you could also use a no-till seeder. Just remember that most native seeds need good contact with the soil for germination. Number five is planting site management, mowing and burning. In the first year, your prairie seedlings are only gonna grow a few inches tall. You need to mow the prairie down when it reaches about 12 inches and you're gonna cut it back to six inches. That way you're mowing the weeds, but not touching your prairie plants. In the second year, your prairie plants will be taller. So you're gonna to wanna to keep the field mowed at about 12 inches tall. In the beginning of the third season, you are going to burn off your prairie in about mid-spring. And here in Wisconsin, that is typically April 15th to about May 1st. Biennial weeds will likely appear in the second year. Those could include sweet clover, burdock, wild parsnip, and Queen Anne's lace. Biennial weeds should be mowed when they are in full bloom, but before setting seed. This usually is around mid-June. Now you know the best practices for establishing a prairie. Now let me tell you how we established ours. So this prairie is about seven and a half acres in totality. And it has been here for about 28 years. 28 years ago, there, YouTube wasn't around. I couldn't go online and I couldn't search for, you know, best practices for starting or establishing a prairie because it just wasn't there. My point is that there really wasn't a lot out there as far as resources 
for us to go to, um, to establish a prairie. We knew that we wanted, when we purchased this land, we wanted to be surrounded by nature and by beauty. And we knew that we wanted a prairie. So we set out to just kind of do it ourselves. So we purchased our land, half woods, half of it at the time was a farm field. And the year that we decided to have the farmer till it under, I believe it was in corn. The year before that, I think it was in soybeans. So the farmer tilled up the entire um, acreage for us and then we hand seeded it. So we broadcast it by hand. We had a seeder that we just kind of walked across the entire prairie. And then we, my husband built a drag out of crates. We had a rope on it and we pulled, we literally dragged seven and a half acres by hand, the two of us. Now keep in mind, this is 28 years ago. So we knew enough to do a few of those things correctly, which is great. But then after that, that was it. We, we know no water, mother nature it was up to mother nature for rain and sunshine my the prairie it, you can see behind me has done well but we do have things in here that aren't native and we do have things in here that can be really aggressive for example canadian goldenrod you know i've been doing things to try to eliminate some of that but then the end of summer comes and it blooms and I see so many monarchs coming through here that I kind of scratch my head and go, okay, it's not a native, but boy, I sure am helping the monarch population right now. So it's really kind of a give and take. Prairies are low maintenance, but they're not no maintenance. And if you let them get away from you, they will become high maintenance pretty quickly. No matter how good your prairie looks, you're always going to want to keep an eye out for weeds that are going to inevitably make their way into your prairie. Queen Anne's lace seeds may lie dormant and pop up from time to time. Birds drop seeds in. Tree seedlings may start popping up from trees that might be located around your prairie. You just really need to keep an eye out for these things. And once you see something, you want to try to get after it. For Queen Anne's Lace, you can simply pull these out by their roots, usually after a good rain. It takes a little firm pressure, and typically the whole thing comes out. For things like little trees and heavy-duty vines, you're going to want to use something like this stump out. But the other thing we do a lot of is we really enjoy our prairie and the beauty that we created by planting it. I walk through here every morning with our dog, Anna, and really just enjoy what is going on in here. And you never know what you're going to see out here. Sometimes we see the sandhill cranes that might be down in the back part of the prairie. There are times my husband and I have sat on our hillside really quiet and watched the Fox family and the way they play and tumble around in the tall grass of the prairie. There's just so much beauty to enjoy and I'm very happy that we took the time and the effort to put this in. Now, keep in mind that you don't have to have a lot of land to establish a prairie or a meadow. You could do it on a, you know, an acre lot or a quarter acre or an eighth of an acre. You could take the corner, the back corner of your suburban lot and change it into a prairie. So I, I think that it, prairies can be any size. And if you do establish a smaller prairie, you actually could probably start with plugs or plants as well as seed because you would be able to kind of give it that water that it would need in the first year um, while it's growing. So I don't want you to think that it has to be large. You know, the only reason that we use seed here is because it was such a large piece of property and there was no way we could water it. So it literally was up to mother nature. You know, you can tell I really love the prairie and I think everybody should have a little piece of it where, wherever you are. Now, there's a couple of things that um, besides prairiemoonnursery.com and prairienursery.com, there's also a book that I really like. 
and it's by Benjamin Vogt and it's called Prairie Up. And he has a lot of great information in here about plants, about prairies, about establishing a prairie. He has lists in here of plants that do well in full sun, part sun, and shade. He also has some ideas for creating a garden in a suburban setting because I, I believe that his home is in more of a suburban setting and he has established a prairie in his yard. So if you are looking for some you know, good ideas, um, I found this book very helpful. Again, I found it on Amazon. So I will put all of this information, both of the websites, the name of the book and the author in the description of this video. If you have any questions, pop it in the comment section below or email me at seasonaldesignsbydawn112 at yahoo.com. I hope that you found this helpful and I hope every one of you considers establishing your little piece of prairie or meadow. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.